It's loading up. All right, Shalom Akim. Like the Sikha Halal, Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakar Kodash. You know, double honesty apostles and others of great males do not rule well. And peace and salutation to the Akim around the world that pushes truth and sincerity. All right. I said I go through a few precepts, you know, entitled um, Try the Spirits, whether they be of, of power. Because you'll see in this truth, the further, the further you get, you know, the longer you become more seasoned in the truth, you'll realize that, as the scriptures say, it's not a carnal war, it's a spiritual war. And you not only had to deal with spiritual elements in the world, but also spiritual elements that has been targeting you as a man of the Lord. You know, to try to get it to go off, to try to get it to transgress and do things that are not expedient for yourself. Right? I'll start with the scripture, um, the first John 4. I'll start from 1, right? It says, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they be of power. Right? You know, a lot of times, you know, you might be in certain situations, you might be in certain mindsets, and you as a man of the Lord, you will know when spirits trying to reach out to you. <laughs> you know, you will know when spirits trying to reach out to you to try to get you to do do particular things. And you just had to try that spirit to know if it's, if it's a spirit sent of the Lord, because all spirits are sent of the Lord. If it's a spirit sent of the Lord on the right hand side, or if it's a spirit sent of the Lord on the left hand side, and that is a, is a very big difference. Because one does try to keep you on track and the other one does try to get you to go off. Right? They say because many false prophets are going out into the world. And even physical false prophets, they have spirits that are controlling them to do what they do also. But they're just doing it on the physical plane. It has spirits that just do it on the spiritual plane also. Right? And it says, as is carnal, so is spiritual. I'll get a good example of that. Right. Let's see, this is. Right. So they first Samuel, right? 24, start from 1. It's saying it came to pass. No, not first Samuel 24. Second Samuel 24. So back here. Second Samuel 24. So back here. They said this is second Samuel 24. I'll start from 1. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he moved David against them to, to say, Go, number Israel and Judah, which was something they were actually not supposed to do. They weren't actually supposed to number the people, right? Like to actually number all the people. They say, For the king said, say, For the king said to Joab, right? For the for the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan, even to Beersheba, all right, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people, right? And this was actually written as something he was not supposed to do. They say, and Joab said un unto the king, now the Lord thy power add unto the add unto the people how many soever they be and a hundredfold and that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why doth the, why doth my Lord the king delight in this thing? Notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the hosts. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the children of Israel. 
right and you see how it started off it said and again the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel and he and he moved David against them to say go number Israel and Judah right now let me see how it is he actually did that It's today, um, the first Chronicles 21, I'll start from 1. It says, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. You understand? Because that is one of the Lord's minions. The Lord has spirits on the right hand side and his spirits on the left hand side. And he sent Satan to fulfill that um, to fulfill that that purpose to provoke David to number Israel. And David wasn't, you know, that was ordained for David to happen. So David wasn't, David wasn't trying that spirit. Because he knew that it was something that he wasn't supposed to be doing. And he wasn't questioning it to say, well, this, this is a bad thing that this spirit telling me to do. You understand? But the man of the Lord, it's like how your scriptures say, I'll jump to, um, I'll jump to Romans. Dice Romans Hold on. The tip of my tongue, you know, see, um, all, all things are written up for time, are written for our learning. The tip of my tongue, but I don't remember exactly which part it is. But the scriptures say, all things that are written up for time, are written for our learning. And these things are, these things are things that we're supposed to, to learn from. Just like now you will see you might be in a situation with a brother and our brother might offend you and I got plenty of spirits you know trying to rile you up trying to get you to to do something off to end up in that same brother situation if our brother actually do something wrong to offend you and you, you, you take rile up from the spirits that will be you know trying to provoke you in your head and go and do something just as bad as that brother did you both of you will be in the transgression you understand? So it had a, even though he, even it, and that is when spirits has tried to attack you majority of the time when you're being emotional. Either when you're upset or when you're sad or something happening to you. That way it's had a it's had to use discernment and always try to discern spirits. You know, try the spirit to see if it wait really telling you to do is something righteous or if it's just trying to get it to go off. Right? Because the Lord has spirits for these for these different reasons to actually cause men to error. And it's not something to delight in. As I tell people, I say, even though you had to make mistakes, mistakes is not something to delight in. Because mistakes have consequences. It's not to say that alright, no every man will fall short. So I mean I had to make mistakes. That don't mean you should look at mistakes as a light thing. Because it have it have men who has make mistakes and fall out. And those mistakes are something that will affect them for the rest of their life. So never watch a mistake, especially in the truth, as something light. Because not all mistakes you could bounce back from. Alright. Um I read to advice in First Chronicles, um, First Chronicles 21. They say, And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. And David said to Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. And there is something that he didn't even need to do. But this was something that his spirit was was just was just pushing him to do and he wasn't trying to discern that spirit and he just like many other men in the scriptures were made examples and for us into the future 
to hearken and learn from. So the mistakes that they make, we will learn through knowledge and don't repeat the same things that they do. You understand? But the scriptures, it, in the Samuel and in the Chronicles, it gave you more or less the same story. But in the Samuel, it said the Lord moved them. And in the Chronicles, who it said? It said Satan moved them. Because that is who the Lord does use to do these things. All right? There are many examples and like that. Just like um, just like Chronicles. Um, take a second. Chronicles eighteen. Yeah, I read this one. It's the second Chronicles eighteen verse eighteen. It says again. He said, "Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven." standing on his right hand and on his left right it say and the lord said who shall entice ahab king of israel that he may go up and fall at ramad gilead right and one spake saying after this manner and another saying after that manner <coughs> so okay it said then there came out a spirit and stood before the lord and said I will entice him and the Lord said unto him wherewith and he said I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouths of all his prophets <coughs> so that's him. I don't know cause him and the Lord said thou shalt entice him and thou shalt also prevail go out and do even so so this is a spirit that the Lord sent out to entice somebody so whenever it is your spirits you know, trying to invigorate to do something. All spirits have come from the Lord, yes. But some does work towards the right hand side and some does work towards the left hand side. So you have to know how to discern, you know, which spirit actually tried to get you to do something righteous or which spirit trying to get you to do something to go off. Which is something that you just grow with after time in the truth. Right? You go to some scriptures pertaining to that. Right? Right. It's um, verse 22, right? It says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord had put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets, and the Lord had spoken evil against thee. So, okay. That is why you also see the scriptures say, in, the, in, your, in your prayers, they say, um, Deliver, um, lead us not into temptation. Because the Lord is ultimately the one that controls all these things. It said the deceive and the deceiver are both his. Which is why I say what is a is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. That way also you always have to be praying that the Lord keep you from these things. And when these elements are actually trying to get to you, you have to learn how to discern these spirits. So this is um So this is Hebreo. Uh, this is Hebrews. Um, Hebrews five. Hebrews five. I'll start from thirteen, right? Hebrews five verse thirteen. It says, "For every one that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness." For he is a babe and you'll see there's something that you'll tend you'll tend to see men who are younger any truth does make you know that doesn't always be able to discern spirits properly because they still are babe they still don't understand righteousness and wickedness from my experience point of view so they'll make a lot of mistakes have a lot of things that they'll do wrong and have a lot of things that you know that might take on more than other things because they're still green they're still growing but if you're somebody actually sees the truth for years and you're going through these things over and over, after a period of time, it should be from experience, you should know how to deal with certain things. You understand? If a brother get you upset, you don't sit down and eat up yourself for this boy, this man, boy. This man. 
you know, this, this man boy thing and I write in a, yeah, no, they're not going to profit here. Yeah, and just talk about this, the, um, the sun setting on your wrath. It also talk about forgiving a brother 70 times 7. You understand all these different things you just had up your through experience and time and being seasoned in the world, you just know how to deal with better and better as time go along. You wouldn't be the same way as when you now start off. Because a lot of the time you're eating up yourself, it'll be why? Because spirits actually inviggling you to hold that kind of mindset. I remember seeing a scripture, something, something but turn to that, eh? Let me see if I could find it quick. This side, eh? No, it's not that. I'll find it. I know I'll find it. I know I'll find it. I'll go out to, sir. I know I'll find it. I know I'll find it. It's Thessalonians. Yeah, it's not Timothy, it's Thessalonians. Yep. Yeah, this one if it's first or second. I think it's first. So like here for the um So like here for the little, the little waiter I just really like the scripture I have been bested. I have been bested. Apparently. I can't find it. Ah, oh, find it. <laughs> I find it. I find it. So there's um, it's today's Second Thessalonians two. I'll start from thirteen, right? Second Thessalonians two verse thirteen is say, but ye brethren. Be not weary in well doing, which is something that you always had to be. It, well doing doesn't be something easy, especially if it's especially when it's to the Lord's standard. A lot of people out there as we tell themselves that it's easy to be good. They not being good according to the Lord's standard. When you had to be good according to the Lord's standard, it does have a lot of obstacles. Because you ain't trying to do it best on how you feel like doing it. You're trying to keep to somebody else that is higher than you. And it's very, it has been difficult sometimes, especially given certain situations, right? They say, verse 14, they say, And if any man obey not the word by this epistle, right, according to the Lord, note that man and have no company with him, that he may be, that he may be ashamed, right? So it's very supposed to keep, if you already realize that brother not, doing certain things he's not supposed that he's supposed to be doing you know keep a distance from him and that's something scriptures tell you it say yet count him not an enemy 
but admonish him as a brother. You understand? So even though you mightn't count him as a brother, as how your other brothers are doing what they're supposed to do and so forth, don't count them as an enemy. You understand? Don't hold him in mind and, you know, eating up yourself over him and that kind of stuff. And that is something you're always supposed to be doing. Because a lot of the time you'll see that you hold people in mind is because the spirits inveigling you to actually do that. Because they want you to have that kind of malice. You know, that continual malice. And that is not just towards brethren. You just get that in many different situations. You'll see that spirits is often be pushing you to do things that off or that contrary to the scriptures. And you just have to use discernment to really balance things out. To be able to realize if what that spirit talking to you and telling you is something good to do or if it's just trying to get you to go off. I remember I was watching a video with Apostle Taha and he was saying that even with dreams, he was saying that Satan has gave dreams too, not just the Lord. And he was talking and he was saying, um, I don't want to paraphrase it wrong, he was saying that Satan has also given you dreams. So even when you get a dream, don't just think that the dream means exactly what you see. Sometimes it could just be Satan just playing with you. Sometimes a dream could get a message about somebody or somebody doing a particular thing. That doesn't always mean that it's the Lord giving you that dream. Sometimes it could be Satan trying to stir up conflict. So you just had to use discernment and know how to balance things out. And he was saying, he was saying, um, if he if he if he got a dream with a brother, and the brother was gay in the dream, he wouldn't just go and all right, that brother gay. No, he might keep an eye on him. <laughs> you understand? He might keep an eye on him to see if he might have the kind of you know behavior. But he wouldn't just up and say, well, yeah, just because he gay in a dream. You understand? And that is using discernment because that that dream do have to be correct. It don't have to be the Lord that gave that dream. And that is a different kind of ways that spirits just try to get to you, to cause you to error or to cause you to do certain things. That's why it's, it's had already use balance and use discernment in different things. Especially when when you're dealing with spiritual elements. Because these spirits were created for these purposes, to deceive people. And if the Lord will, they just succeed. So don't take what it is that is be telling you lightly. You understand? Don't take it lightly and tell yourself, well, I'm just talking and of us. No. These spirits are created for that purpose. Right? So you always have to pray to the Lord for strength to ask Him to help you to, as, you, as the prayer said, um, deliver us from all evil. Right? And you want to make the video too long? I hope it was edifying. You know, as I said, I'll go through a few scriptures pertaining to these things because as time goes past and as time goes near, these things will be these things will be um, increased, right? I'll get, um, I'll get one more precept. Right? I'll get one more precept. And like I say, it is usually it is usually be more effective, or it is actually be more on you when you when you're in a weak state. Sometimes it be because you're in an emotional state, whereas you're sad, you're depressed, you're angry. This is be the times where it is majority of the time come after you because you're in a weak state, you're vulnerable, right? So there's um there's look for. Is Luke 4, start from 1. Say, and Yahweh Shai, being full of the Holy Spirit, returned from, from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So the Spirit lead him into the wilderness, right? They say, being 40, 40 days tempted of the devil. <laughs> he was fasting. And you know when you're fasting, you're in a weak state, right? It's not just when you're fasting, spirits just try to get to you. But when you're naturally in a weak state in general. That way you see it our brothers just say that on the day of atonement that is fine, you know, there's got a lot of temptation to eat. You know? Because spirits just try to get at you when you're in a weak state. 
Right, you see verse 2, it says, being, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward, afterward hungered, right? And the devil said unto him, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the son of power, command this stone that it be made bread. Right? So he done start attempting him already. And that is, that, is, that is what he does do. That's just what he does. Tempt you. You understand? But he had discernment, so he wasn't going to fall for that. Senya Washai answered him, saying, it is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of power. So he even had some, he even had some smart remarks to give him. <laughs> and the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showing him all the kingdoms, all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power will i give thee and the glory of them for that is for that is delivered in unto me so we know the earth is given into what the hands of the wicked right this is their this is his this is their kingdom right the kingdom of satan all right I say, all this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is the, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. Right, and now it's in the hand of who? It's in the hand of Esau, until eventually, Adonia returns, and it belongs to him forever. It says, if thou therefore will worship me, all shall be thine. And I was answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy power, and him only shalt thou serve. And if you really look at it, if you really look at what you are trying to say, because he knew that the kingdom would soon be his. The same way the men of the Lord today know that the kingdom would soon be theirs also. So, he had no reason to even want to take that offer. The same way men in the Lord today have no reason to want to take the offers that Esau does want to give them. So you see all these men that sell out just for little paper dollars and little enjoyment. Not hearkening on to the actual riches that they'll receive. Is the same thing that they're supposed to be doing. He, they're supposed to be saying the same thing that he said. Because he knew that he had to receive something greater. And we know that we have to receive something greater. You understand? But all these scriptures just showing you how temptation is something that was going on from since the beginning. And it's something that we all we also had to go through. So you already had to be mindful of these spirits out here. Whether they're coming whether the, whether they were spending your ears on the physical sense or whether they're coming to your in the sense of in people because that's spirits that has actually go on people to try to get to you sometimes they use your family sometimes they use your woman sometimes they might use other women and you will as a man you know there are different different ways that they just try to get to you they don't always try they don't always come to you by just the voice in your ears sometimes they just come to you by other means and you just have to discern these things according to the spirit right anyway and with that, I'd like to give all praises and all glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham Yahushai, Ba'asham Rekar Kodash, double honesty apostles, and others of great millstone and rule well, and peace and salutation to the Akim around the world that pushes truth and sincerity. Right? This is Yaraba from the Trinidad Camp East, from the Trinidad, from the GMS Trinidad East Camp, saying Shalom, Akim, stay strong.